Hello and welcome to the DOS Scholars playthrough of one of the greatest PC strategy games of all time, Conquered Kingdoms. Now this game was released in 1992 by QQP, uh, makers of such classics as uh, The Perfect General and Lost Admiral. Um, but for a brief, brief period of time in 1992, this game was the most popular game on the market, the most, the highest rated game, um, rated above games like Civilization, Ultima 7, Wing Commander 2, classic games. Um, it was a true, true classic. Uh, it is a true classic, and it's still fun to play. All right, so why haven't you heard of this game? Well, it's because it's a turn-based strategy game, and uh, turn-based strategy games are completely dead today, unfortunately thanks to a, a game that was released a month after this one called Dune 2, which was basically the first real-time strategy game where, where things moved in real-time, units real moved in real-time instead of taking, uh, you know, stepped turns like this in other turn-based strategy games. But Dune 2 came out and the uh, turn-based market just died. Uh, you ask, why is this game one of the greatest strategy games ever made? Uh, the graphics suck, obviously. But uh, graphics don't matter because the game is such a fantastic, fun, um, intelligent game that has a devious AI. It's like playing uh, the most fantastic board game you've ever played, basically. And uh, winning in Conquer Kingdoms is all about victory points. So you start with a set number of turns in each game. You have 10 turns or 20 turns, depending. And at the end of all those turns, the player with the most victory points wins. You gain victory points by occupying the towns, the cities, and the castles that are scattered around the map. And each one of these places has a specific number of victory points that it's worth. And uh, you occupy these locations with the various army units. Um, and so at the beginning of each game, the players buy a, a, an army's worth of units using their starting gold. And uh, then as they fight and die with these units, you can build more units using resources that you collect as the game goes goes on. And uh, these newly built units can only be placed in the game board through the castles that you own. So it's really important that players, once the game starts, uh, capture a couple castles so that they can replenish their armies through these structures. Um, and so let's talk about resources. There's basically three resources in the game, gold, wood, and coal, classic three resources. They work a lot like Settlers of, the, of Catan, if you ever play that game. Um, and s except instead of buying roads and houses, you're buying archers, knights, dragons, etc. with these, these resources. And I think the greatest part of the game is how combat between the units works. There's uh, 16 units in the game, and it's like a massive, complex game of rock, paper, scissors, in that every unit has a counter unit. Um, there's no uber units, there's no zerg units, there's no crappy units, whatever. It's Every unit has has its positives and negatives, and um, can be countered by with another unit if you know how to do it. Um, so, like knights counter lancers, lancers counter cavalry, dragons counter almost anything. They're sort of the M1 A1 tank of the game, but even dragons be, can be countered by archers, and uh, gargoyles counter archers, etc., etc. So it, it's not quite as simple as it sounds, though, because each unit also has hit points and magical spells, different weapon ranges, different movement rates over certain terrain, special abilities. Um, it's just endless strategies involved. Um, it's an easy game to get into, but it's a tough one to master. It's like a classic, uh, all classic games. And it's one where a little manual reading goes a long way, especially uh, you should check out the uh, various unit descriptions before you start, I would recommend. Alright, so let's uh, start a game here. The first thing you want to do is hit view royalty here and then you want to create your character so let's just create a character really quickly here and so that's your character and then this is the AI character that you'll be fighting against so let's exit back to the main menu and then we can go ahead and hit fight a battle and here's the map selection screen we have a bunch of maps that we can choose from here and even more here and for now I think I'm going to try the uh, the small little one called Opposing Lands so let's start the game with these options and in this screen you can customize a lot of the uh, the options in the game, short games, long games um, smaller forces, regular forces I'm just going to put it on uh, I think 
a short game length, and then we can start the game. You start out here with a view of the map. There's a small uh, mini-map here that shows you the overall map. And uh, you have blue blobs and red blobs. And these blobs are, are potential starting points for your armies. You have to pick two of these to act as starting points. And uh, the, uh, your, 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 um, your player can start at the blue blobs, and the AI player will start at the red blobs. So our blue blobs that we can choose from here are uh, these two around this castle here. And then there's a blob right above this castle here. And I think we definitely want to have a starting army next to this castle because we want to capture it as soon as possible. So let's go ahead and select this area here as one potential starting area. And then I think I'm going to select... Well, we, when you select these things, you should also look at the uh, the value of the various towns around the starting areas. Like, this one's worth 700 points. We, we need to grab this one as soon as possible. We need to grab this town as soon as possible up here. You need to grab these castles, obviously, and also you want to look and see where your resources are on the map. And I see next to this castle there's a gold here and a copper here and a wood here. Um, so we want to keep all these factors in mind when we're placing these armies. And also notice that he, my enemy has the potential to put uh, part of his army over here on my side of the uh, map. So I might want to put an army here just to make sure that he doesn't... Oh, uh, he can't, you know, just go go crazy on this side of the map. I think I'm going to put one of my armies right down here, right below this castle. Um, yes. All right, so there's three castles here. There's a castle down in this corner. There's a castle in the center island here. And the castle right here on this um, part of the map. And we want to try and um, grab as many castles as we can, deny our enemies the castles because the whole idea is at the end of your 10 turns you want to have more points and points are gained by grabbing castles and towns alright so we're finished picking our starting points let's hit ed exit and now we have um, we have our starting army selection screen here and here's all of our all of our units that we can buy with our 350 points up here you can hit more units here and you can see the sort of advanced expensive units that you can buy also um, but let's just place our basic um, bread and butter units first. So what we want to do here uh, is crap, capture this castle as fast as possible and you can do that with a gargoyle. Gargoyles can fly over castle walls and land right in the center of the castle which is what you have to do to capture a castle. You have to have a unit, um, a typically a knight or something like that, um, in the center of the castle to, uh, to capture it and then you can use that castle as a staging point for your newly created um, units that you uh, will create later on. So I'm going to I'm going to have this gargoyle here just try and fly right over there into there and I need to, to, to back up hit the gargoyle with some uh, some defensive units. So what I'm going to do is going to go ahead and put a really expensive dragon here that can sort of follow his flank and just watch him as he goes in um, to keep him from getting killed and then I'm going to put a bunch of cavalry here that can sweep around this road here, hopefully clear out what what uh, might be um, the enemy might be staging here, um, and grab these these valuable resources right here. And then I'm going to follow up the uh, cavalry with some um, some lancers to take care care of any enemy cavalry that that might be heading up towards my army. I'm going to follow it up with um, a knight, a couple knights. Um, and a swordsman. I'm just going to go ahead and put a swordsman on this goal here so that he can start grabbing it right away. I'm going to put a swordsman on Highdale here so that we can get the, those 400 points for that town. And um, let's see. I need a spy because spies are great because I'm going to put a spy right here. Spies are great because they can see farther than any other unit and they can move faster than any other unit. And uh, the enemy can't see your spies unless they're standing on the exact same square. So they're really sneaky. Um, they're very weak, but they're great for just scouting ahead and uh, planning moves that you that you want to that you want to do ahead of time. You can put a spy in the enemy enemy camp and find out where he's weakest. So I'm going to put a spy here, and I'm also going to put him in a boat. So I'm going to put a boat right next to the shore here that he can hop in, and then the boat will zip past all these things and hopefully be able to uh, get a good view of what's, what's um, going in down here. 
below the castle with the enemy. Um, I'm going to put a bunch of boats here because I'm going to try and do a little flanking invasion here of uh, this castle down here that he's going to try and grab. My enemy's going to try and grab as soon as he can. So I'm going to um, get some boats here. I'm going to load them up with archers because archers on boats are one of the greatest um, offensive weapons in the game because archers are the only units that can fire while on a boat. Each boat only carries one unit. Um, so you, if you want to, if you have a whole force of boats, you need a bunch of archers to protect your yourself against, say, dragons or any other unit that can travel over water and threaten a boat. Um, and let's see, uh, I'm gonna gonna get a a wizard too, because I think what I'm gonna do is have a wizard teleport a small army uh, back here behind the enemy's front lines. Now the, then the wizard can, can, can teleport a, a limited number of units. Basically, uh, this, he, he teleports a unit in his square and then one unit from each square adjacent to him. So let's say in this little wizard army I'm going to have a knight right next to him there. I'm going to have a catapult or two. The catapults act as sort of artillery. They can they can shoot uh, pretty damaging uh, missiles from far away. Um, um, I'm gonna get a phantom in there too. Phantoms are helpful sometimes because they um, act as sort of area defensive units. If you've got a phantom in your in your army and you attack or you you're you're attacking an enemy, um, all of the uh, damage that the enemy does to your army will be halved because the phantom has sort of a, this, I don't know, it's like a scare uh, modifier that will um, protect your units. So I'm going to put a phantom there, then also a dragon. Alright, so got a good little starting army there. Alright, so here we have our starting armies ready to go. We haven't seen the enemy's starting armies yet. We won't see them until we actually encounter them in combat and uh, find them ourselves. So let's get a, let's go ahead and uh, hit exit to start the game. All right, so it's 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 our turn to move. We get to start. We get to move first. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, move my knight into the castle here, and I do that by by right clicking on the unit I want to move. So I, I right click on the knight and then you left click where you want him to go and now if you look down here you can see he has three M3 it means three movement points that means you can move one two three square spaces here so let's just click on this um, gate square here and he'll move right there Le I left click on that to move him there and we do the same thing with uh, this knight to put him on the gold spot here so now he's he's on this gold and the gold is worth one point sometimes they're worth two and sometimes they're worth three but um, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and move our spy onto a boat here. So I've moved him onto this boat. I moved the spy onto the boat. Now we can start moving the boat up this way. Ooh, it's so he's my spy has now revealed part of the enemy's army over here, and um, he's got a pretty nasty little collection of uh, units here. You've got a wizard and um, some trolls. So with this, with this wizard here, I have to be careful because he has a thing called a fireball that he can cast um, if he's got enough mana to do it. And the fireball will, will pretty much damage or kill any unit within five squares of it. Alright, so I've finished moving and I'm ready to, uh, to let my enemy move. So I hit done here. Uh-oh. So he's got his, his wizard up here and it, he's this wizard is targeting my um, troops here. I'm afraid he's going to blast them with his uh, his fireball. Unfortunately, <sighs> yep. oh devastation! Wow. So I've moved all my pieces and I'm ready to roll the dice again. And here I've got my first uh, my first build screen, build unit screen. So I've I've got two gold, zero coal, and zero wood. So um, I can either buy things, buy either buy units with gold outright by hitting this this bar here, two gold, three gold, or I can hit this bar here and buy a unit with a combination of gold, coal, and wood.